Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ignite. My name is Sam George. I'm here today to talk about our IoT services, our vision and roadmap, and to talk about an important generational shift that's happening from connected assets to connected environments. The first thing that I want to do is start with an understanding of IoT's role in the worldwide response to COVID-19. You know, when COVID-19 hit, one of the first things that we did was reached out to our partners who provide all of the vertical specializations on top of Azure IoT for a response. And with all of the companies that you see at the bottom of the slide, we've been able to put together solutions that help reduce, reduce the risk of exposure uh, to protect employees, to be able to limit contact for lower transmission rates, and ultimately to create safer workspaces for everyone. At some of the links that you see here, you, have, you can see all of the different rapid response IoT solutions that we've put together. If you're interested in participating and providing one of these solutions, you can reach out at the email address you see below. And then what we're going to be talking about as well is all of the different trainings and special uh, uh, specializations that we provide for certification to help customers and partners get trained, understand how to use all these uh, technologies that we build, and then ultimately provide these solutions. So to highlight this, I wanted to go deeper into a particularly noteworthy uh, COVID-19 protection solution. And that's uh, in close partnership with RxR Realty, uh, a solution that uh, they call RxWell. And RxWell is um, something that protects the entire environment as well as the employees that are in it. Um, so let's take a look at that and hear from uh, the CEO in his own words. I love New York. I love New York to a fault. My name is Scott Reckler. I'm CEO and chairman of RxR Realty. From our formation in 2007, we became one of the largest owners of office properties in the New York metro region. And we were on that path to reimagine the future of that workplace and COVID hits. To bring people back to work, rejuvenates and reactivates our city streets and our small businesses and the energy that makes New York great. In talking through things with the Microsoft team, we developed what we call RxWell. Converting all of our doors to touchless doors as you walk in, having thermos scanners. We were already down the road using Azure AI, IoT, and Edge. As we began to shift to the RxWell solution, we were able to just accelerate some of that and think through what were the other use cases. For us, engaging with the Microsoft team was very natural because we had an alignment of vision. The Microsoft Azure team was way ahead of the curve when it came to IoT. They ensured that we designed RxWell in a manner that was scalable. RxWell now has been rolled out in our headquarters building. We feel good being back at work. And so now we're in the process to roll this out to some of our peers in New York and other parts of the Northeast. So RxWell is really an end-to-end -end solution that covers, uh, that actually spans both the cloud and the edge and protects employees. It helps employees attest to their, their health. Uh, it ensures a safe working environment as employees are in an environment. Uh, and it really provides a level of safety uh, that's really unprecedented in these times. One of the things that we love the most about the RxWell example is that it very much aligns with our vision. You know, several years ago, we started talking about how our mission is to provide solutions and capabilities that cross the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. And we think that this is really the new compute paradigm. You know, it's not just about the cloud anymore. It's not just about the edge. It's about both working in concert. And to work in concert, it requires the technologies that you saw in RxWell, such as IoT and AI and edge computing and increasingly things like 5G and digital twins. Now, if you step back and look at what's happening in the industry, you're seeing a generational shift that's happening from what we call connected assets to connected environments and ultimately connected ecosystems. What we mean by that is that early IoT solutions were really concerned about the asset, right? You wanted to know whether the HVAC unit was gonna fail or whether the elevator was making reliable trips or needed servicing. And increasingly, like you just saw with RxWell, 
you're not just concerned about the assets in a building, you're concerned about the entire environment, the people in it, um, everything that's happening in it. And then over time, what we see is this move towards connected ecosystems, where once you have connected environments, you're starting to see companies form partnerships over insights in their own unique connected environment. So the first thing we want to do is turn to connected assets, because that's very much where customers are engaged today. Over the last five years, we put together the world's leading innovative portfolio of products and services in IoT. And it covers everything from our IoT and edge device support, from the tiniest of devices running in kilobytes of memory, up to the largest uh, multi-blade server stacks running full Azure services on premises. We have a broad set of services for IoT that you see here that help customers and partners put together solutions that span the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. And then we also have solutions and solution accelerators that help customers and partners get to market quickly uh, and produce these. Now, importantly, at the very top, you see all the different priority verticals that we focus on. And for each of those verticals, we have a set of really industry leading partners that provide all the vertical uh, specializations that are required for all of these services in each different industry. You know, IoT is gonna touch virtually every business in every industry on the planet. And that really requires a rich partner ecosystem. And then over on the left, you see Azure Defender for IoT, which is our rebranded name for Azure Security Center for IoT. And the idea with Azure Defender for IoT is that it protects everything, both in the cloud and out on the edge, and keeps you safe. Over the years, thousands of customers have already gone into production with Azure IoT, all of them that you see here, plus many, many more. But importantly, what we've done is we've built up an incredibly deep ecosystem of partners, all the way from system, uh, system integrators and advisors to solution providers, connectivity providers that you see here, solution aggreg aggregators, partnerships out in the de device and developer ecosystem, and many, many more. This ecosystem is really incredibly important because, as I mentioned, IoT is going to touch every business in every industry. And in Microsoft's opinion, that is not a winner-take-all market. That is a market that requires these deep ecosystems and partnerships. Now, today at Ignite, in addition to showing off some of the new customer scenarios uh, that are using all of this, what I'm going to be talking about is a set of product announcements and all of them that you see here. So let's go ahead and get to those. The first is we continue to refine and expand our developer certifications and training. Um, over on the left, you see our developer uh, specialty. And what that is, is as, develop as customers and partners um, get certified or learn about all of our different offerings and want to get certified and attest to their expertise, they can take this uh, certification process. Over on the right, you see Microsoft Learn. Now, for every single service that we build, for every capability that we build, there's Microsoft Learn content, and all of that content is freely available. So you can go up to the link that you see here and go and check out anything that you're curious about um, and learning more about what we do. And then again, as you gain expertise and you want to attest to your expertise, you can take that developer certification. I wanted to start uh, the product announcements at the IoT and IoT Edge device level. First thing is that we're thrilled to announce Azure Sphere and AT&T partnership on a Guardian module. Now, what a Guardian module is, is it's a pattern, a hardware pattern, where you plug a secure device into a fundamentally insecure one, and it provides a layer of isolation. Now, typically, Azure Sphere has only been able to work over Wi-Fi, but with this new AT&T partnership, we'll be able to work over cellular as well. So we're really thrilled to announce that it enables you to seamlessly connect devices really from anywhere, and it provides Azure Sphere's industry-leading rich end-to-end -end security offering that helps you protect the device to constantly monitoring it, to provide updates, and of course, now that works over cellular. So we're thrilled to see that. On the tiniest of tiny devices, you have um, sometimes only kilobytes of memory to run, and that's why we developed Azure RTOS. Azure RTOS is compact, it runs in as little as 50 kilobytes of memory. It enables incredibly fast time to market, and it harnesses the full power of Azure. You can connect directly to our IoT services from it. And the best part is it's all available up on GitHub, and we're going to be showing that off in just a second. 
There's partnerships with all of the companies that you see below, including the world's leading semiconductors. So we're thrilled with those partnerships. Azure RTOS is already generally available. And what we're announcing today is an adaptation layer for free RTOS. So if you have a free RTOS application and you want to take advantage of Microsoft's industry leading RTOS, you can actually just take that same free RTOS application and you can run it directly on Azure RTOS. Makes it super easy to migrate and it actually makes it faster when you run on, on, on Azure RTOS, which is great. This will be available up on GitHub this month. Now with Azure Sphere and Azure RTOS, they actually work better together. So Azure Sphere uh, devices are actually pretty sophisticated devices that runs not just the Azure Sphere operating system, which is a Linux microkernel, but actually has chips on it that run uh, uh, ARM Cortex-Ms that actually run any RTOS. And we've made Azure RTOS work first class on Azure Sphere. So both of these work better together. Turning to IoT Edge. Now what IoT Edge is, if you're unfamiliar, is it's our edge compute platform for IoT devices. And it enables you to run cloud services or your own services that are containerized and to push those directly to run on the device. And once they're on the device, it can run entirely offline and disconnected. One of the things that we've been busy working on based on customer feedback is IoT Edge support for industrial environments. Now, many times in industrial environments, you have to adhere to strict network isolation requirements. Oftentimes, the network is actually tiered or sliced. Uh, and there's certification standards like ISA 95 that quantify this. And so I'm thrilled to announce support for Azure IoT Edge support for these industrial networking environments. And we do that by supporting nested IoT Edge devices. And so you can see over on the lower right-hand corner, you can see the different network slices, and you can actually arrange in a hierarchical fashion Azure IoT Edge devices. We're also thrilled to announce security enclave support. So if you're running very sensitive workloads that have very high value intellectual property, uh, require strict privacy and, and so on, you can create a workload that's fully encrypted in transit and in deployment to the device, and then runs in a secure enclave for protection of that. Combine these two features really make Azure IoT Edge the most robust, production ready, and industrial grade IoT Edge platform on the planet. And once you're managing fleets of devices, you need rich monitoring support across your fleets and across individual devices. So we're thrilled to announce it's available now, our new monitoring support, where we uh, output a Prometheus format from IoT Edge that can be used with Azure Monitor as well as any other monitoring framework that supports Prometheus, which is widely deployed. And then coming soon, we have Azure Monitor integration, and you'll see all of that working first class right in the Azure Mon Monitoring portal. All right, so from turning now from the tiniest of devices up to the cloud, um, we start to talk about some of the announcements that we've got on our services. So I'm super, super thrilled to announce IoT Hub support in Azure Stack Hub. Uh, it's going to be available in public preview in October. And what this does is this enables IoT Hub, which is already broadly available all over the world in the cloud, to run on-premises in isolation. It's the only offering like this from a hyperscale cloud provider. Uh, and enables you to run entirely offline and disconnected. And it still works with those IoT Edge devices across that network tiering that I just talked about on-premises as well. We've also added support uh, to our IoT Hub device provisioning service for private link or VNet support. We already made IoT Hub available in VNets, but now the device provisioning service is available there as well. And what this really enables is another industry leaning level of security for the only hyperscale cloud provider to, to enable this. And so your IoT Hub and your device provisioning service run in isolation right in the cloud in a VNet that's supplied by a customer or partner, and then you tunnel into it from a VNet on-premises uh, or through Express Route. <clears throat> so Azure Defender for IoT. Now I talked about this earlier when we were looking at our connected asset slide. Azure Defender for IoT is a rebranded name for Azure Security Center for IoT. But we've also added, and that's already generally available, 
but we've also added a whole bunch of new capabilities from our recent acquisition of CyberX. So all of that is available in public preview now. And what that is, is Azure Defender for IoT previously had to run software on a device in order to monitor it. But now with the CyberX capabilities, we can actually discover and manage uh, unmanaged or and, and dis uh, discover and monitor unmanaged devices. So devices with no software agent running on them simply by doing deep packet inspection across the network. Now, Azure Defender for IoT also plugs into Azure Sentinel, and Azure Sentinel gives you left to right visibility across your entire data estate. So as you can see, in addition to those IoT Edge devices or IoT devices being monitored by Azure Defender, you can now monitor all of the different unmanaged devices. And as I mentioned, the best part about it is you can simply put a device on your network and it'll discover all of those unmanaged devices and it's got a rich set of ML-based behavioral analytics that will tell you whether one of those devices is behaving in an anomalous fashion. This really helps you do asset discovery, risk vulnerability management, and what it does is it also helps unify the IT and OT teams uh, to provide a comprehensive view to make sure that those devices and assets are functioning properly, but that they're also secured. Now turning to IoT plug and play. IoT plug and play is something we announced late last year. And what IoT plug and play is, is it breaks down the barriers between devices and solutions. In particular, it means that a device can self-describe. It can say all of its capabilities in a JSON LD schema format using something we call the digital twins definition language. As it self-describes that, when that connects to solutions in the cloud, those solutions can then automatically adapt to those devices. And what this means is it means that any device that's plug and play enabled can work with any solution that understands plug and play. So we're thrilled to announce that IoT plug and play in the platform is now generally available as well as in our SDKs. And that includes everything that you see here, including our device catalog support, support for solution builders, as well as device builders, and our certification. So our certification is now ready and we're doing final certification uh, and inserting those uh, certified devices into our device catalog. And once you've certified an IoT plug and play device, not only does it work with solutions like Azure IoT Central that support plug and play, but it also works with all of our other offerings, including Azure Digital Twins, Time Series Insights, and all of the partner solutions that support that as well. Now IoT plug and play is not a uh, it's really about an ecosystem. And here's some of the different providers and what they have to say about building that plug and play ecosystem. Now, so far, we've talked about things like Azure RTOS uh, and IoT plug and play. But I want to show you when you start combining these two and then you start uh, adding support for um, what I'm about to show you in GitHub code spaces as well as VS Code, you can go from what used to be days to set up or an entire day to set up a working embedded environment to just minutes. So let's go ahead and check out how that works. So here you see the GitHub site for Azure RTOS. And again, you can just go and browse at yourself. What you see here is open with code spaces. So what that does is that can creates a containerized workspace that's running in the cloud that has a full working environment as well as VS code as well as all of the dependencies that are required to build Azure RTOS. And here I have the digital twin definition language for my embedded Azure RTOS device. Uh, I have, I'm sending temperature and humidity. Uh, the temperature is being set in Celsius. And that DTDL then is used to describe the device. In the Azure RTOS code for the sample then, what I do is simply fill in my IoT hub connection strings and the device provisioning service scope. And I can build it. Now, I'm building it entirely in the cloud. And it only took me about five minutes to provision this working environment in the cloud. And I just fully built. And now what's super cool about this is that I can run a little bit of software on my computer locally. And I can connect to a local device. And so I can actually debug and step through code in the cloud. And it's running right on my device. I flash that device from the build output in the cloud right down to the device. Now, what's cool about this in VS Code, you have access not only to Azure RTOS, but all of the IoT Hub 
um, uh, connections. Um, so I can see the device up in IoT Hub. I can actually send commands from IoT Hub back down to my device uh, using some of the new plug and play uh, plug and play APIs. And the device actually responds to that. And so here you see a few examples of uh, the light or the heat sensor from or temperature sensor from the device uh, changing in response. Super, super cool. Um, so this is a level of productivity that's simply unparalleled. It's, we've really never had it before. It's a first in the industry. Really thrilled to talk about that. Turning our attention to, uh, to IoT Central. So IoT Central is our IoT app platform that takes all of those Azure services that you've seen so far uh, and combines them and harnesses them in a low-code, no-code IoT app platform so that anyone can uh, get started with IoT and go to production immediately. So we're thrilled to announce we're now doing monthly updates of IoT Central and more importantly, documenting all of those monthly updates. Um, so all of the capabilities that you, you're about to see are now part of those monthly updates. Um, we've updated our continuous data export feature so that you can now filter what data is being sent from IoT Central to downstream data services. Um, you can also add message enrichment so you can add extent uh, additional metadata as that as that device data is sent uh, to downstream Azure services. We have rich support for jobs at scale, which is the way you manage all of your devices. And so we have property update jobs and filters. You can rerun failed jobs. Um, you get live updates of how your job is going. You get batching support. And all of this is already available. We're also thrilled to include live data and telemetry from your devices. And so now when you connect a device to IoT Central, you can see the raw data that's coming across and you can interact with that in IoT Central as well as through the Azure command line interface. You can also upload data like telemetry from your devices. And so you can configure uh, devices to do that right from within IoT Central. And then it'll upload those directly into blob and file storage. And then we're thrilled to announce a new template that's available now in IoT Central uh, for object motion detection with live video analytics. So you can take Azure live video analytics and harness that on your IoT Edge devices and manage that all from within IoT Central. Coming soon, we have full support for IoT plug and play. And then later in December, we're going to be introducing a $1 per year per device pricing model. And so this is great for really low volume, low data devices. Um, and that'll be coming soon. We're really thrilled about that one. It's great to see the amazing pickup that we've seen with IoT Central. We're seeing companies like Sensoria who developed uh, Sensoria Health, which uses IoT Central as well as the IoT Hub Fire Connector for Azure. And what they have is they have a Sensoria mat, which helps them and their practitioners reduce the risk of pressure ulcers for wheelchair users. So IoT Central and a local device is being used to monitor that. And then operators and nurse practitioners can monitor that right, on, right from the cloud. So it's really amazing use case to see. It's great to see all of the new medical devices that are being produced and connected to cloud-based solutions. And importantly, that are being done with our fire support, as well as all of our HIPAA certification for all of our Azure services. Now, turning our attention to connected environments. So far, we've been talking a lot about connected assets. But what we're seeing, like we saw in the very beginning of the talk, is this movement towards connected environments. Now, connected environments aren't just about real estate like we saw in RxWell, well, but it's also things like manufacturing, where you're starting to track not only the manufacturing assets in the factory, but the inbound supply chain, the outbound distribution networks. You're starting to track energy, right? the energy distribution grid and the inputs to energy. You're starting to track healthcare and agriculture and these types of rich environments that are not just about assets, but are about everything that is going on in an entire environment. Now we've built Azure Digital Twins as the service in Azure that really fuses and marries the physical world and the digital world. In the physical world, you can take input sensors from things like IoT Central or IoT Hub, as well as third-party offerings feed that into Azure Digital Twins and marry that with signals from the digital world, both from Azure and things like Power Apps and Dynamics and Teams and Office, as well as all of the different third-party offerings out there. 
And we're thrilled to announce that Azure Digital Twins will be generally available uh, next month in October. And Azure Digital Twins is really an industry first. It has an open modeling language that's based on a JSON LD schema that we call the Digital Twin Definition Language or DTDL. It enables you this rich flexibility so you can describe not just devices, but people, places, things, and importantly, relationships. Now, DTDL is all open source and it's up on GitHub at the link that you see below. And once you model an environment, you send that model to Digital Twins and we manifest a live execution environment. You hook in all of the different signals like from IoT Hub or IoT Central to Digital Twins and it keeps that model up to date. And then as that model winds up changing, you can send changes to downstream services. So with Azure Digital Twins then, you can model anything, you can track the present, uh, track the history of that, and then use that to predict the future. So let's look at a few ways that customers are taking advantage of that. So G GE, GE Aviation is using Azure Digital Twins to combine data from two disparate systems, creating a living replica of an aircraft. Now, one system keeps track of the performance of an aircraft when it's in the air, and the other system keeps track of everything that happens to an aircraft once it's on the ground. So currently that's reconciled using a manual process but with this new system in place using Azure Digital Twins, GE Aviation will have a living digital repl replica of that entire life cycle of the aircraft. And that's really useful to help keep track the performance of the airplane, to increase efficiency, and ultimately decrease the cost of maintaining that airplane. Johnson Controls has developed an, a platform called OpenBlue that makes it easy for builders and building management to create, in, to create and retrofit energy efficient buildings. So they use Azure Digital Twins to model every aspect of a building, rooms, walls, pipes, vents, filters, uh, uh, light fixtures, everything. And then with that living model, they're able to then track what's going on, track the history, predict the future, and ultimately reduce the amount of energy that a building is using. Now there's multiple layers in our opinion of Digital Twins. Now we provide with Azure Digital Twins the base hyperscale layer of a platform that then our partners can extend on top of. A great example of this is actually ANSYS. ANSYS is the world's leader in simulation software, and their software is used by engineers to build and validate complex products and processes. ANSYS has been one of Microsoft's strategic partners for some time, and they're building on top of Azure Digital Twins to provide simulation services. So with Azure Digital Twins, ANSYS can take their Twins Builder solution to a whole new level. So let's take a look at how that, what that looks like. So in this demo, uh, we built Azure Digital Twins that's showing real-time monitoring of a mixing process typically found in heavy industries. By combining the IoT sensor data with physics-based simulations, you can actually get better real-time insights into what's happening and ultimately better qu product quality. ANSYS Digital or ANSYS Twin Builder is also integrated with Power BI. So what you see here is a Power BI dashboard that can help operators identify when a product doesn't match a recipe and then address that issue in real time, saving the entire product match. Throughout the process, the operator can also virtually monitor the mixer and ensure that liquids are mixed properly. This is what the architecture looks like. You see Azure Digital Twins there in the middle, and it's been a great partnership with ANSYS and Microsoft uh, on bringing this to market. And I'm thrilled to announce that this ANSYS Twin Builder with full support for Digital Twins and DTDL will be available in January 2021, at the link that you see here. Now, finally, the Digital Twins Consortium. We are very, very adamant and believe very deeply in an open ecosystem of Digital Twins. So we are partnering uh, with the Digital Twins Consortium as a founder, <clears throat> along with all of the groundbreakers that you see here to bring Digital Twins, uh, the, the definition language of it, as well as all of the different vertical specializations of digital twins for different industries uh, in an open uh, ecosystem and bringing that to life. So there's over 140 companies that have joined this digital twins consortium. And for companies that are interested, we encourage you to check this out. Last, here's how you can stay in touch. Uh, there's some links for you for Microsoft Learn, uh, as well as our IoT announcements, everything that I just covered in our blog post all of the developer resources that you see here, as well as some upcoming deep dives. Thank you so much, and you can stay in touch at the link that you see here. We hope you have a great Ignite, 
and thanks for tuning in.